Hello and welcome to a free tutorial on sound and music production with me Daniel Rothman as your host. Today we're going to be talking about the basics of subtractive synthesis. Now subtractive synthesis refers to the process of creating sound and musical notes electronically by oscillating a sound wave that's rich in harmonic content and then filtering out some of that content in order to sculpt the specific sound that we want. The most obvious example in nature is the human voice, in which our vocal folds act as an oscillator producing a rich sound that is then transferred to our throat and mouth where we filter out some of that sound in order to generate the vocals and consonants that become our language. A subtractive synthesizer works in a very similar way. It's usually built from three main components being the oscillator, the filter and the amplifier. The oscillator creates a sound that can be processed in a number of ways by the filter and is then sent to the amplifier where the volume of the sound can be controlled. We also have a few ways to modulate the parameters of these components. The most common ways being using an envelope generator or a low frequency oscillator. These generate values that can be sent to any parameters of the synth including volume and filter cutoff as I've shown here. I'll get to these in more detail in a minute. As I mentioned before, the oscillator basically generates a continuous sound wave that we could do a number of things with. The two main parameters for the oscillator are waveform and frequency, also referred to as pitch. Waveform is the specific structure of the sound wave that the oscillator is emitting. Usually you will have a few to choose from. Below you can see four waveforms named sine, sawtooth, square and noise, going from left to right. Now, the graphic actually represent the movement of the speaker cone that will be reproducing the sound. As for the sine wave, you can see the wave going from 0 in the middle to plus 1 at the top, then to minus 1 at the bottom and back to the middle. This movement is reproduced by the speaker cone moving outward towards the value plus 1, then inward toward the value minus 1. God, that was hard to say. The specifics of how this works aren't so important but the different sounds that the waveform makes are very important. For example, the sine wave is the most simple and round sound, consisting only of a fundamental tone and no harmonics. This means that there is not much to filter out when the sound reaches the filter component, while the saw wave is very rich in harmonics and has a quite buzzy sound to it. The pitch parameter is another word for frequency or speed of the waveform. While frequency is usually given in hertz, Pitch refers to notes and octaves on the keyboard. For example, A4 on the keyboard is equal to 440 Hz. Here's an example of a saw wave going from a deep frequency to a high frequency. Up next, you guessed it, it's the filter. If you're familiar with an equalizer, the way that a filter works might actually be quite obvious to you. Basically, we're taking away parts of the sound spectrum, like removing the treble or the bass for instance. We do that by defining a cutoff point given in Hertz and depending on the filter type that we've chosen, frequencies above, below or around the cutoff point will be removed. Here's an example of the low pass filter represented as LP on the far left. So the cutoff is our first main parameter on the filter. The other is resonance, sometimes referred to as emphasis. And what it does is boosting the frequencies near the cutoff point in order to put emphasis on what the filter is doing. Clever, right? Now here's an example of that. So we have a few filter types to choose from and I've included the most common ones here. The first is low pass which removes the frequencies above the cutoff and thus lets low frequencies pass through. The next is high pass, which does the exact opposite, letting high frequencies above the cutoff point through and removing frequencies below the cutoff point. Take a listen here. Mm. 
Next up, we have Bayon Peos, more often referred to as Band Peos. As the name states, um, it lets a small band center it around the cutoff point through and removes everything above and below the given band. Here's an example of a band pass filter in action. Finally, there is the band reject, which as you can probably figure, does the opposite of the band pass. It removes a band of frequencies centered around the cutoff point and lets the rest pass through. As for the amplifier, the final component of the subtractive synthesis schematic, I don't have much to say except it controls the volume of the sound. It does however lead up to the next subject, which is modulation, more specifically the envelope generator. What it does is it generates a value between 0 and 1. This value is changed over time, usually by four points referred to as attack, decay, sustain and release. These are all referenced to when you press a key on the keyboard and when you let go of it. In most cases this envelope is used to control the volume of the sound, but can also be routed to other synthesizer parameters. Attack, which is the first point in the envelope, defines the amount of time it takes from when you press the key for the sound to reach full volume. Here's an example of that. Decay defines the amount of time it takes for the sound to reach the sustain volume, which is a static value. Think of it like this. The attack is the amount of time it takes for the sound to sweep in to full volume and decay is the amount of time it takes for the sound to sweep down in volume until it reaches the sustain level. If you hold down the key, the sound will stay at the sustain level until you release it. Take a listen here. Finally, Release is the amount of time it takes for the sound to go from the sustain level to being quiet after you release the key. Keep in mind that if the sustain level is zero and the sound has already decayed to zero before you release the key, you won't hear any release no matter how long it is, since there is no more sound to release. So that's the envelope generator and as you can see it's quite simple yet very powerful, especially when you start routing it more creatively to the filter for instance. The other common type of modulation is the LFO which stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. It's basically the same as the oscillator but instead of transmitting sound it transmits values like the envelope generator. The LFO also usually works at a much lower frequency than the oscillator, hence the name. <laughs> Just like with the normal oscillator, we can control waveform and frequency. Here's an example of different waveforms being used to modulate the low pass filter cutoff. As I mentioned, the frequency of the LFO is much lower. Here's an example of the LFO operating at some different speeds. Now there are other types of modulation that I'm not going to go into here, but feel free to explore and play around with them. That's the best way to really understand them in my opinion. I hope you've enjoyed and possibly learned something. Remember that if you can understand how the subtractive synthesizer works, it will be much quicker and much easier to both program the sounds you have in your head as well as analyze and take apart cool sounds that other musicians have made. This is my first tutorial, so please feel free to give me feedback in the comments, let me know if I did a good job or if there's something I should be doing better. Oh, I hope not. I'm also very interested in um, what you would like for the next tutorial, so make sure to let me know. That's all for me today, I'm Daniel Rothman and thank you for watching. Bye.